my mother would come and she'd always want to know what I did and I'd tell her about CPU architecture or SMI and her eyes would glaze over but when I worked on Bluetooth I said well it's a wireless cable you know and she understood that and she liked that so <laughs> my boss at the time came up and said well you're finishing up this ACPI stuff can you figure out how to integrate wireless into the notebook and this was 97 we had got together Ericsson and Nokia and Toshiba and IBM and that probably represented 60% of the cell phone market at the time and about 60% of the notebook market at the time and we uh, formed a SIG with all agreeing that we wanted to build this universal, very low cost, private wireless cable. We did it under an open IP policy, which was really nice because that really allowed you to kind of take the best pieces everywhere and kind of put them together. But the key was really defining the goals of what we wanted to do. We were working on a program, we called it BizRF, and it got the nickname BizRF, so it wasn't a great name. <laughs> and uh, er Ericsson was working on MCLink, which eventually became the radio we started with. And Nokia was working on something called Low Power RF. We had goals on, on what we wanted this thing to cost, strategies for it. it was going to be built on a bulk CMOS process, which hadn't been done before. And, and uh, you know, it had the security, privacy, it had to work across the world. We picked the ISM band to do that, and we had to go fix some of the regulatory issues with that. We had set out those goals. We had an agreement on them. We, we had a term sheet that we got everyone to agree to, and we put it together. and. Um, Intel kind of became the, the leader in that simply because you had IBM and Toshiba that didn't trust each other and you had uh, Ericsson and Nokia that didn't trust each other and so we were kind of the Switzerland. <laughs>